Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a growing, intensifying snowstorm, plus some of the storm signals that may be coming down the road. Welcome back everyone. Appreciate all my followers out there and all the new followers. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I do daily updates. It's easy to do. All you have to do is click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to get all my daily morning reports. we got a lot to go going on because we have a growing, intensifying snowstorm to talk about. we got upgrades to some uh, winter storm warnings. You can see the swath of this system that's coming across Missouri. Uh, we've got <laughs> winter weather advisories again for northern Mississippi and northern Alabama. But these are all upgrades here in Tennessee and Kentucky as well as West Virginia with those winter storm warnings. And that will feed up the coast through uh, DC, go up Jersey, and then up the coast through Cape Cod into Boston and going into southern New England. So let's let's fine tune this. But on the back side, we've got some dangerous wind chills, folks. This is some true Arctic air. This is real time wind chills right now of 50 below zero. That is dangerously frostbiting cold. You can get frostbite in less than 10 minutes. And that type of air mass that is plunging south with those negative wind chills reaching all the way into the Texas Panhandle into Oklahoma this morning. You can see the Arctic air coming in on the backside with those plunging uh, wind chills and temperatures, and that's going to be able to shift east and follow that snowstorm. So let's take a look at the overall radar depiction when I was making this video. It was coming out of uh, St. Louis, coming out of Springfield. There are 16 degrees. You can see the the driving force of the winds is down to 19 degrees in Oklahoma City, down to 28 just north of Dallas here. So you can see that Arctic air is plunging south, and then you have that developing snowstorm that's out ahead of it. Uh, 16 degrees in Springfield. And we got some heavier snow forming just to the south of Nashville, and we could be looking at some one to two inch snowfall rates as this continues to move across. You can see the snow has started to fall in Bowling Green here. So let's kind of fine tune this and take a look at the overall mesoscale discussion that the Storm Prediction Center has put out for that area where that heavy snow is going to be reaching into the greater Nashville metroplex over the coming hours. This is through six to 10 o'clock this morning with some heavier snows. We could be looking at one to two, two inch per hour snowfall rates. Now, again, this are, this is a time when people are leaving for work and get it on the road. This is just a kind of a, a, a dangerous setup setting up uh, with that heavier snow moving in of one to two inches Per hour, per hour snowfall rates as this will continue to, to move across uh, to the east here. So let's take a look at the overall 8 a.m. with the latest uh, high resolution guidance here. You can see those ch kind of a changeover in the northern Mississippi and northern Alabama here with those winter weather advisories already in place. The blue here, that's your graph at the bottom of the screen. Your blue is your snow, your orange is your sleet, and your pink is your freezing rain. And of course, your green here is on the south side. That's the warmer side. That's your that's your rain. That's just your overall rain. But yeah, we got some snow that's breaking out, as I showed you, moving out of, of St. Louis into southern, uh, southern Missouri here going into Southern Illinois and really starting to crank up as we as we get into that greater Nashville area with those heavier one to two inch snowfall rate potential moving in. There's the time frame about one o'clock. You can see the time frame in the top right hand corner of the screen. 19 Z is about one, two o'clock this afternoon. We, we could be covered in uh, northern portions of Tennessee. We got sleet and snow and icy kind of mix on the southern side and the entire state of Kentucky. That's why they've got those winter storm warnings already in place is just inundated by one o'clock this afternoon with some moderate to heavy snow at times. And there's areas that could get that convective banding a lot like Nashville's getting Currently, right now, heading into Kentucky with those one to two per two inch per hour snowfall rates, and even three inch per hour is probably not out of the question for an hour or two. And and uh, some of these areas, and all feed start feeding into uh, West Virginia. That's in the afternoon hours, and as we extend into that six, seven, eight o'clock time frame 
today for for thursday yeah as you can see that heavier snow i mean the darker blue kind of indicates where maybe the heavier snow could really start to elongate around this corridor here into West Virginia. That feeds up into uh, southern portions of PA. That eventually gets into, uh, you know, as well as feeding more into uh, Virginia, going into DC, going into Baltimore, into Delaware. That'll eventually go into southern uh, New Jersey. This is the midnight time frame going into one o'clock in the morning, you know, kind of overnight. And as we can as we continue to push off the low pressures off the coast pumping in that cold air on the backside with that convective banding moving up moving up the coast here and as we get into that six o'clock tomorrow morning time frame again this is another kind of dangerous setup this is rush hour traffic so it's probably a good idea if you could just stay home in these areas because this snow is going to be pumping one to two inch snowfall rates in and around the Jersey area, going into Long Island areas, New York City, especially I think it gets start to crank up into the Boston area, into Rhode Island. That's where they have actually got those winter storm warnings in place right now with some four to eight inch totals is not out of the question, even, even isolated amounts potentially higher than that. This continues pushing up. This is Friday morning, 6 a.m., right? I mean, this is moving up the coast into Massachusetts, into Connecticut. Everybody's like, hey, when's it going to snow? <laughs> when's it going to snow in Connecticut? When's it going to snow in Massachusetts? Well, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's Friday. It's going to happen, you know, it, with the snow coming. And some of these could be coming in fast and furious right along the coast here and even into Cape Cod. Man, Cape Cod is going to get probably crushed with this snowstorm coming coming through as we as we see the changeover that'll push into southern portions of uh, Vermont, New Hampshire going into Maine as we go into that Friday time frame. Here is that noon time frame on Friday that continues pushing up the coast. You got backside into Rhode Island. But more into Boston continues for Boston area, so it starts about you know six overnight. I mean overnight in the Boston area, I think it really starts to get cranking up between six a.m. and kind of noon, one two o'clock time frame, and then it starts to somewhat die down. But heads into uh, Portland, Maine, gets into you know portions of Bangor here, and this will slowly push off uh, to the to the northeast and then clearing on, on the backside. But here's the overall kind of swath of where the snow is gonna be falling with that with that training low pressure intensifying over Kentucky, intensifying over West Virginia, and then kind of re-intensifying over uh, as we get into uh, Connecticut here, into Rhode Island, into portions of Massachusetts, kind of like right along the coast here. So let's kind of fine tune some of these totals and this is the latest guidance from the high resolution short term models here and yeah you can see about six inches in nashville tennessee bowling green about four inches uh somerset about six inches you want to knoxville about three inches pikeville about five inches these are just kind of kind of like some preliminary totals but it kind of gives you an idea of where some of the some of the heavier snows are going to be falling here and as we continue to move up we got Harrisburg about four inches of snow snow uh into DC another four inches back into DC so this is yet another snowstorm that's going to be uh impacting the same area that impacted the, that snow just the other day and as we continue to feed up the coast here uh, th this you know goes into uh, Frederick about three inches, into York about four inches, all the way into uh, Baltimore about three inches here, Dover four inches, you know Wilmington three inches. So yeah, we can continue to move across here and go into you know, kind of the northern parts of Williamsport, you know one inch, as uh, Scranton one you know one inch, one and a half inch. This is more of a kind of a coastal event. Philly about three inches of snow, but I think. As we move up, uh, these are a little bit higher totals with that growing snowstorm, especially as we get into the New England area. Go into uh, New York City, about six inches of snow potentially. Go, uh, Long Island here into Brentwood, as well as uh, Hartford. Uh, Hartford here, six inches. Norwich, about seven. You get into get into Rhode Island here, Providence for seven and a half inches. Boston still has some of the higher totals of eight inches. I mean, this has been pretty consistent showing, you know, a good six to eight inch swath. And it's not out of the question. Some of these areas could be picking up some double digit 
snowfall totals and yeah even up to a foot and potentially in some of these spots where i do feel probably the greatest probability if it's gonna overperform or into portions of far eastern kentucky portions of west virginia and then a re-intensifying storm coming along the coast here as it pulls in that that um, moisture here with that so some of the heavier rains so these are the areas that it could possibly overperform even from some of these totals uh that that we're that we're looking at so as we continue to move across there's portland about three inches get into bangor so yeah it, it's kind of stays off the coast as it hug, hugs up, up up into the northeast and and then quebec's about three inches so yeah this will continue to move shift off into the northeast and rapidly die down but for the rest of the country that cold front <laughs> backs up as a warm front on saturday right so when it backs up it pulls in the south winds so that basically sets up just east of dallas with some rain we got some heavier rains starting in the houston metroplex that feeds into louisiana goes into arkansas this is all rain folks it's not snow this is all rain on the back side that's this is sunday time frame so after the snowstorm ends we've got a rapid kind of a, a warmer warmer temperatures feeding in and this pushes up into kentucky back into west virginia with more rain and then as you still got the cold air in place and this is a, a concern of mine with an ice storm really kind of setting up into pennsylvania going into new york and this would be your sunday sunday afternoon time frame and of course the temperatures plummet at, in the overnight hours and then that would set up kind of a, a more of a, a a nastier kind of commute or your Monday morning rush hour. So yeah, we have pretty fairly significant events potentially coming up for the, the Mid Atlantic and the Northeast with you know tr tr tough uh, travel conditions uh, in in this area. So yeah, so going forward, we're even looking at this kind of this polar low, this this lobe that's going to split off from the polar vortex, and this is definitely by far going to be your coldest temperatures of the season coming up for new england this is the 11th and 12th time frame you can see these above average temperature anomalies really starting to heat back up out out uh, in our western areas and then our eastern two-thirds of the areas especially for the mid-atlantic and especially going into the northeast and new england we could be looking at some 30 below temperatures anomalies setting up with some negative temperatures by the time we get into the 11th and 12th time frame so let's take a look at the teleconnections what may be coming up so here's your pna which is your pacific north american north american you can see it was predominantly negative i mean it was predominantly a positive for i mean see negative for the entire month of december but it's been rapidly shifting up i mean it's been a noticeable change in the overall pattern and that's why we're getting some of these snowfall you know, a change because it was well above average in December. So now as we get into January here, and it's still continuing to lift up, and then it stays positive going into that second week of January. And then we're taking a look at the North American, uh, North Atlantic oscillation as well. That actually has been trending more neutral and actually goes negative as well. So we're starting to see some more teleconnections of some of that cold air shifting south and staying around <laughs> as well so as we look at the arctic oscillation kind of the same deal we got a trending into neutral and then it trends actually negative as we get into the middle of the month here and there's your epo that's your eastern pacific oscillation so you have a you have a positive pna which is your typically builds the ridge out west with some a lot of those above average temperature anomalies and then you have a negative EPO, which pulls all the colder air into the central and eastern two-thirds of the United States. And then we'll also have a trending neutral to negative NAO and AO. So we're starting to see some of the teleconnections starting to really start to come together to finally start to drag a lot of that Arctic air further south and stay around as well. So with that EPO going negative here around the 13th, that's a pretty significant storm signal that could be potentially coming up with all, all the dynamics with the positive PNA. At the same time, we actually see a pretty good setup for further south. I mean, this is by the time we get into that 15th time frame. So these are some of the storm signals I'm already kind of looking at uh, down the road, right? 
We've got a 50-50 low setting up off the East Coast here. We got the ridge developing over Greenland. Uh, we've got the other ridge out here by Alaska. And then we have a developing trough with negative teleconnections pushing the colder south, colder air south. And then, yeah, we, we, we were seeing, you know, just kind of a dry as a bone. We could be looking at a trough setting up into the Four Corners regions and going into West Texas. At the same time, we could be looking at possibly rain, and that sets the stage for, you know, potentially for maybe snowier, you know, types type setups a little bit further south. So I can't get into too much detail this long out. Of course, this is nine, ten days out. But this is pretty, this is the probably the most significant storm signal we've seen a little bit further south. And as this continues, moving across by the time this end of the 16th, I mean, look at that. That's a pretty significant setup with this with this positive PNA. We got a lot of Gulf atmospheric river pumping into the system. We got the trough digging into the backside, pumping in the Gulf air. We got cold air draining on the Northwest flow, that cross polar flow. And so that's pretty, that could be a significant setup for not only portions of the South, but going up the coast but by, by the time that 15th, 16th time frame. So that's just one of the storm signals I'm kind of looking at, you know, down the road that could be fairly significant. So we'll definitely fine tune that as in, in the days and as we get closer to that event. But yeah, between now and then, this is through the 11th, right? The setups are kind of mainly more Eastern two thirds, the central and Eastern two thirds with there's your rain coming in. Uh, we got that warm front backing up, so that pulls in the rain through, uh, you know, East Texas, goes into Louisiana. This is, and then all the setups down here is dry as a bone, right? But, you know, beyond that, we could be looking at more rain trying to fill into this area of the country where they desperately need it. At the same time, we got cold air draining from the north. So that could be pretty interesting setup, uh, you know, going forward. So here's your snow overall between now and the 11th time frame. There's that snow event uh, coming up. But yeah, things could potentially change, at least for our southern regions down the road, and maybe a potentially another significant setup or another snowstorm for that 15th and 16th time frame. So I'll definitely fine tune as we get closer in. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely share with your friends on uh, social media, let them know this particular snowstorm that's gonna be impacting areas today and tomorrow. Uh, so definitely hit the subscribe button if you hadn't already and catch me in the next update where I protect you before and after the storm.